hello guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel welcome and um, my name is Tara I'm a Caribbean medical student and today I will be sharing with you how I passed my school MBME in one sitting so before I start I just want to clarify a few things first of all I'm in no way smarter than you are and um, passing the MBME was just pure hard work I really worked hard during that period I hardly had any social life so you can do it as much as I did I mean if I was able to pass then you surely can pass it so today I'm going to be sharing everything I did and factors I think contributed to my success in the exam and yeah so I'll just get right to the story so first of all I'm going to tell you the factors I think contributed to my success and the first one is that I started really early. Um, as a student from MD1, MD2, MD3, MD4, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't the best in my class, but I always made sure I prepared for exam. I wasn't the best, I wasn't the worst, you know, I was just, you know, a normal student. And I made sure I studied for all my exams. I made sure I... I did all that was required for me to pass a course. So I was present. I was obviously doing other curricular, extracurricular activities, but I made sure that schoolwork always came first as much as I could. And when I started really studying for the MBME, I started in October. That was October last year. I was in MD5, but I started fully studying, like focused studying in October. While I was still going to classes, so as I was going to classes, I was studying after classes, and um, I think starting early and just knowing exactly what I wanted to do was very important. I was very intentional about my studying. By then, I already had a goal set for the exam. I was very intentional, very, very intentional, and I worked really hard. So hard work is very, very, very important for this kind of exams because you might be smart, but you still need to, you know, study. So, yeah, so I started early. I, I started really studying for the focused studying for the exam in October and I wrote the exam in February. So the next thing that I think helped is that I had a supportive environment. Now, when I, when I came, when we came to the island because of the hurricane, I got an apartment on my own, not because I wasn't really thinking about the exam, but I just happened to get an apartment on my own. And it turned out to be good because um, it really helped me study for the exam. You know, I could sleep when I wanted to, which was very important for me. Sleep has always been very important for me. So, you know, when I come back from the library, I just want to come back, listen to some music and sleep. And I was able to do that so I was able to have I had that control over my environment because I was staying alone so that helped me I think that really 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 immensely then so I had a supportive environment and it's very important to have a supportive environment because sometimes you might be around people that don't really understand why you're studying so hard you know sometimes I mean if you're in the Caribbean you have people ask you like why are you studying so hard why in, in the library late? Why do you have to go to the library on Saturdays? But they don't just get how hard these exams are. But you know what you're about and you know what you're doing. So you just keep focused and just do your thing. Then the next thing I think helped me is that I was off social media, like totally off. There was only a period when I deleted my WhatsApp because, you know, that didn't really help. I got it back because that was the only way I was talking to parents. So yeah. So, but other forms of social media, I was off. I was off Facebook. Even when I went to Facebook, it was just for studying purposes. I was off. I was off social media. Then, the next thing I think helped is that I try to stay organized. Now, I'm not this kind of person that can follow like a very structured schedule, like for a month or a few weeks or even a week. So, what I do is that I always have a small book with me. And during my MBME period, I had I always have this. Even per, presently, I I still have this. So this kind of helps me be organized, even if I don't like like one structured timetable for a month. 
So this is what I did. Every day when I come back home from school, I would just analyze what I did during the day and, you know, write down what I wanted to do the next day. It helps me stay organized. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So you can see this was after my MBME, obviously. This is July. So the one I used for my MBME, I don't have it with me anymore. I don't know where it is, but it was full. So I don't know where I kept it, but I still have this one. So you can see I write down what I want to do for the day, like the night before. Then if I'm, if I'm not done with what I was supposed to do, I just bring it down to the next day. And that's what I did during my MBME and really helped me a lot. So, and the good thing about this is that sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you have no idea why you're on earth. Just like, why am I even here? Like, who am I? But when you have this book, like, you can always go back and be like, wow, you know, um, looks like I'm a medical student and I have exams to prepare for. So, really cool. Keeps you organized and I really enjoyed. I really benefited from using it and I still benefit from using it, you know. is you can see it's not expensive it's just a simple small book that you can carry around so very portable and so if, if you don't do structured timetables you can certainly do plan day by day it really helps yeah so the next thing and the last thing i think helped me was that i when i came back from school when i came back from the library i always i listened to music I just chilled, I just rested, I relaxed. I'm not one to come back home from the library and want to continue studying. I have tried it severally, but it never works. When I came back home, I listened to music. I listened to Imagine Dragons, Sia, and I listened to The Daily Show. And those helped me really relax and, you know, just gain back a little energy I lost from studying so hard. Then I went straight to bed. I slept for... I slept from 9 to 5, so that's why I was doing throughout, sometimes 5.30. So I slept really well. I wasn't studying at night during my MPM period at all, at all. So yeah, that's what, those, those are the factors I think contributed to my success. At least those, those were what, was, what I was doing, what was happening. Then um, what I did, you know, everybody keeps asking, what did you do, what did you read, blah, 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 blah. So, First of all, when I started in October, I started watching videos, you know, because I knew I still had to grapple some, you know, some physiology and some pathology. So I went straight into the videos. I did Becker's Biochemistry. Dr. Raymond is amazing and I loved his teachings. There are some I went through over and over again and I really, really understood what he was saying and I can go back today and do it again just for the fun, fun of it because he, he teaches with so much passion and just makes you understand. It makes you want to understand more than just for writing exams. So it's really cool. Then I did Becker's um, Physio. Also the same thing, amazing. I learned a lot. Along with um, Becca video, I did BRS Physio for CVS, for recipe, for um, endocrine. The main topics I did BRS and I listened to the video, the Becca's video. Then for Neuro, I did um, Kaplan, but honestly, <laughs> sometimes I was listening to it so much that I was like, man, it was like, as I was listening to it, I was forgetting everything I was doing. So I, I don't know, maybe for Neuro, if you, if, 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 if you have already read for Neuro, maybe you should just do questions. Then for um, behavioral science, I, I did Becker's, but um, I don't know if it helped because during my exam I was still lost in all the ethics. No, not et ethics. Ethics was okay, but the epic questions were really very tough for me, and I still found them very difficult. So I think for epi, maybe it's better to just intentionally solve questions at least once in a week or once every two days. And you know these videos I'm talking about, they are the they are the um the class videos, the one that each one for each subject you have like ten videos and each of them are like four hours in a classroom setting. You know, the one the offline one, not the one I didn't pay for it, I collected it from a friend with with my flash drive, with my external flash drive. So 
that's what I did. Then um, the other thing I did after watching videos for pathology, I did pathoma. Like pathoma and pathology is just like synchronized. When you're doing pathology, you want to do pathoma. Pathoma is the pathoma is the best, and that's what I did for my pathology. Then after doing videos, I that was like in um December, I guess. I started doing questions, questions, questions. I was just doing questions throughout. I um i started with the mbme early forms like the form one the form six i did it i did i think i did like four of the early forms you know and what i'll do is that i'll go to school i'll intentionally like set up some papers like four papers for each block one paper for each block and then i'll time myself and make me make myself feel like i'm in a real exam setting and i'll do the exam and when i finish if i had the answers like if i if if, if the mbme came with the answer i'll just look at it and mark it and then the next day i'll go through my corrections and if there was a concept i failed i'll go through it and read it again and make sure i understand it and take notes on it and try to repeat it as much as i could and go back to the question and see if i can answer it again you know i'll just go through the ones i failed really well then when i'm done going through my weak points i'll do another form those were the early forms i'll do another form and that's what i kept doing till something happened in um, I think it was ending of January. Ending, ending of January, one of my mates came up to me and, and was like, let's start studying together. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. So we started studying together and it was totally worth it. I really gained a lot. And we would study, we would come to the library really early and we study till six. Sometimes we did up to 70 questions and it was you world questions, right? Sometimes we did up to 70 questions a day. But most times we like at least we did more than 30 questions in a day and we would discuss these questions and if we failed it we would exchange ideas, we'll look at all the options, we'll discuss each of the options before we look at the options itself. So it was very intense and it really helped me. It made studying less boring for me and I took less breaks because like I was just I also had to be at the other person's pace and it was really helpful. Um and uh, the person I was studying with was, um, I think he was was obviously a little bit above me in knowledge, right? So I was, I don't know, actually, maybe, yeah, I think he was, he was actually, he, he was, because he was one of the best in class. So. Yeah, so I totally enjoyed studying with him, and after, when we went to write the exam, it was amazing. He also got above 70, and we're all happy. So definitely, if even if you don't think studying with someone is for you, maybe you should try it out, you know, and see if it's really not for you. You shouldn't just conclude that it's not for you. Studying with someone helps you know what you're really good at and what you're not. Because sometimes you might think you know a concept, but when you meet someone that knows it better than you do, then you will know that maybe you don't really know the concept, and it will help you like um see how people solve questions you know and the good thing about it is that i learned how he was solving questions and why he was getting it and how i can implement new ways of solving a question you know from his own point of solving questions so i really learned a lot and i did that for a month before my exam so maybe that also contributed yeah so those were the things i did and yeah, I, I think what helped at the end is that I was intentional, I knew I was going to write the exam, and I worked really hard. So if you're planning to write school MBME or, you know, step one, you know, these exams are very hard, you know. So I think you want to give it as much as you want, as much as you want to score, you know. So like, so that's what I did basically. That's what I did. That's really everything I did. No secrets. Then I think that is what I did. Uh, you want to say something before I go? I want to say that even if you feel the MDME once or even twice, not the end of the world. MDME is just uh, like a parameter for your step one. So it's just a journey towards your step one score. So when you feel it the first time, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you're not smart or that. 
come past it the next time. You just keep studying, look at your big points, go back there. We do, 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 answer questions, and at the end of the day, you get your business score. So, yeah, for me, that's what I did, and I'm still studying for step one along with these rotations. So, yeah, I'll just keep you updated with how things are going. Wish you all the best in your exams, and stay blessed.